Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we are 3D printing, painting and constructing the Cal Kestris Blaster from Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And this 3D model was put together by Nebic and you can find a link in the description below to the Thingiverse and you can download it yourself if you want to have your own go at making this. And it's a pretty excellent 3D model split up into different parts in order to print and then construct. You can see as well that I'm very impressed that they've made this kind of backbone bit which is most of the construction and then everything else attaches to it very well thought out however you notice there's a barrel sheath and then there's a barrel that goes into it and this seems like it didn't need to be the case you could have just had the actual barrel at the end of that on the sheath model and i think it would have been perfectly fine because you only see a tiny part of the actual barrel itself so to me, it's a little bit of a waste of printing time and plastic. Also, the barrel is rifled, which on a blaster, I'm guessing you don't need. So I think a, a few things could be tweaked here to make this even quicker to print out. But still, excellent, excellent model. And you can see with all the 3D printing done that we have quite a lot of parts here to put together. But the biggest kind of advantage to this model, I think, is this handle, which actually slips on to the center piece. And just, I think this is really well done because you could have gone a lot more complex here and it's just a real simple thing that really quite pressure fits on. So I think it's brilliantly done. And this purple piece here, when I come to spray paint that, what I'm gonna do is mask off a few different areas and get a few different tones of silver just so that it doesn't look like one piece. And hopefully that'll come across as being a bit more intricate than it looks, but with all the additional stuff we're going to be, be slapping on this with different colors, I think it's going to end up looking really, really good. Although most of this is just going to end up being gray and gold, and that's pretty much it, but it should pop real well. And major props to the original designer from the in-game version, because this is a cool as hell blaster. And it's got kind of an old Western kind of feel to it, like, you know, like a single shot kind of pistol type kind of deal. I think it just looks incredible. It's very much different from other Star Wars blasters, I think. And this is what drew me to it. When I seen the model on Thingiverse, I was like, I love the look of it. I thought it would look really cool holding it. And now that I've got a 3D printer to actually do stuff like this, we can go ahead and print it out and make it something I can actually hold, which will be freaking cool to do. And as you can see, I've now painted up everything and you'll notice that the body of the gun has a few different types of paint on it, just so that there's a little bit of differentiation, like I said. And then we've also got the other additional bits. And I've tried to pick stuff that's in line with the in-game version, but I have changed a few things like on the handle, I've gone for a nice mat on those kind of screw parts that would go in normally to hold the handle in place. And now we're gonna go ahead and glue in this barrel. I assume the reason for the actual insert barrel is probably so you can easily modify it and put different barrel types in and stuff like that, just like you can do in the game where the guns are completely modifiable and you can get different modules to put on. So I assume that's what why it is an insert rather than being just in the actual model itself. And I simply put in some glue at the very top of the barrel so that when you slide it in, that glue is probably gonna get spread most of the way and it is a pressure fit on like all of these parts, the tolerances are, extremely tight you could probably put the whole thing together without any glue although i am using plenty of glue hopefully to keep this thing together for the long term and also this barrel is a troublesome one because the bit that it fits onto is quite weak and as i was test fitting it earlier i did cause a little bit of a crack although thankfully now the actual barrel is fitted on and glued that crack is just not going to be able to expand at all but certainly it was pretty close to me potentially breaking it and having to reprint that one part and this is also after I like sanded every little bit to try to just reduce all the tolerances a little bit. I even was in there with a knife and carving out a few bits just to get it all to fit together. So the tolerances are extremely uh, close. No, no uh, forgiveness on them at all. But the overall weapon itself goes together very good. Again, back to that initial design that the guy came up with where that main body part has everything attached into it, which means that once you start putting it all on it, it really starts coming together extremely, extremely well. And this is not one, I didn't quite check the reference to see how far this should go in. Instead of it going as far in as possible, I just made it so that it was flush with the barrel. I think that aesthetically 
looks really good and I believe that's what's it, it, like in the game but I didn't actually double check that. And you can already see as well how the gold and the silver is really popping. Like this gun is going to look sensational when it's finished. And this was another very tight tolerance bar on the rear sights. Super hard to get together. I, put in, I ended up actually putting in a ton more glue than I show here to really hold this thing together. And then I pressured it into a vise so that it would hold it. And I left it overnight just to make sure everything was good. Because it was a little bit wobbly, it wanted to kind of uh, always sit one-sided and it would always get perfectly pressured up on one side, but the other side was a little bit annoying. So it ended up getting put into a lot of pressure and held up completely overnight so that I could come back to a layer. And as you see, this is the next day and it is, well, very well held together with a lot of elastic bands to make sure nothing was going to move while it's set. And uh, you can really start to see the gun coming together here. And then it was a matter of just taking off the elastic bands and we have the last pieces to start gluing on. You might have noticed that I already glued the little bits on the other side as it sat there drying. And uh, this is now the final part that we need to do on this side before we do the handle. And the handle is going to go in just as raw plastic. I love the, the black look of it. So no paint on the handle whatsoever with the idea that it should be a beautiful contrast to everything. So we'll see once we put it together. But yeah, now we're going to put in the final pieces on this side, get them all glued in. And then that is pretty much 90% of it done. And I think it is looking really, really good. But the handle is going to bring it all together. I also cannibalized a bunch of stuff off of an old Xbox, which I was going to put on in some of its like circuit boards and details. But in the end, I went with what the 3D model actually had with it instead. Because I think it may have been a little bit too intense adding on uh, real electronics to this. And actually, I think I made the right choice when this is all put together. I think it looks like it jumped right out of the kind of Star Wars universe. Although, like I say, it looks more like an old, like a really old Western gun rather than it being totally in the Star Wars universe. But of course, it is a cannon weapon from Star Wars. And you can see here how I was uh, really starting to feel like what it was going to be like in the hand as you can really get the sense of it right there and it just it feels good like it's a really nice weapon to hold. It looks the part, it is really sensational. And uh, here's the handle going in, so this is a, a tight pressure fit. I actually did pre-sand the bottom of the purple plastic before putting it in just to add me with a little bit more kind of looseness in order to get it there but it ended up going together perfectly very hard if you want to take this off like it's it's on there solid without any glue taking it off would be uh, very risky with uh, potentially breaking something and then what we've got is our four kind of fake screws and again i love the design here this could have been easily actually pins that went all the way through but because of how it's designed and how it's made and how it goes together this is perfect. This actually works really, really well. And you just don't need something to go in right through that adds more complexity. You just don't need that at all. And as a result, the finished product here looks great. And you would think just by looking at it, that these things do go right through the body, whereas they don't. And I think it's, I just think it's well thought out, which is always a very, very interesting when I download these models from Thingiverse and see what people have come up with because of course they're giving them away for free you can go and use them and it's always awesome to see how they're built and any criticism of them is extremely minor because of course it's all super free and this has just been put together really freaking well and it just looks sensational like what a gorgeous blaster design really top notch from the original game designer to the Thingiverse designer, really, really good. So I'll leave you now with some good footage and then a couple of final photos of the whole thing. And let me know what you think about it in the comments below.